Welcome back to the Masters of Materium, and we've got a really special treat for you today because we have played the playtest. We got early access, it was called the Creator Playtest because of our channel. We got blessed with the opportunity to experience the world of Mirandus and Grill. What was your reactions to playing Mirandus? Super excited. First time it's really felt like a game, you know, especially when you go back to the first playtest where it was just numbers above people's heads and very basic, completely different art style. Really fun. Had a great time playing it the other day. What about you, Elam? Yeah, I really enjoyed it as well. Other than this kind of nagging bug <laughs> that was kind of plaguing me, which we solved. Uh, it reminded me very much of kind of playtest three mixed with like the combat and, you know, graphical style of play test for and all put together in one, you know, nice little package. So, yeah, I, I was impressed to say the least. We really got a taste of a lot of the game mechanics from basic harvesting to basic crafting to combat. So it was a really awesome experience. Only lasted about 100 minutes and then uh, the servers crashed. That's all we got. But again, on Monday, May 15th, the playtest will be live and you will be able to play if you own an exemplar. With that being said, we're going to walk you through a step-by-step -step how to basically do well in the playtest. Alum has done all the math as usual and we're going to walk you through it. So let's play the video and walk you through what you should do. Let's do this. Go ahead, Alum. Yeah, so we're starting off on the beach of the Narrows Landing right in front of the Citadel of the Sun. And you typically have to run up this hill, although it's probably best to just walk up because you want to limit your stamina use with the exception of combat because to restore it, you need to be eating food. And the time it takes you to gather wheat and or various animal parts and stuff is longer than it does for actually crafting. And here it says, gather 86 pine to craft your short bow, club, and full set of brigadine armor. And you can get 150 plus if you want to craft everything, all the steel weapons and stuff later. And the pine tree is up to your right there that you can see. So that's the very first thing you should do when you're on your way to your citadel. And uh, this here is going to the entrance of the citadel, which is in a different zone. You just click on travel and you teleport to the citadel zone. Love the look of the buildings here. Yeah, it's got a really nice kind of courtyard. It feels like a nice village, actually. And for some reason, I walk into the wall here. Not quite sure why, but... <laughs> you drop the nails at the tavern. Making sure it's strong enough to hold things up. So this here is the uh, main crafting hub with all the 5 by 5s And this is where, when you come back to the Citadel, typically at nighttime, you're going to want to, you know, upgrade your gear or refresh your stamina, etc. First thing you do, you want to, you know, hang a left there and grab some flax. And... You'll want to uh, get uh, 75 flax in total, and that's enough to craft your initial shortbow weapon, the full set of padded armor, which is tier 2 armor, and your leather armor, which is your tier 3 armor. And once you've gathered all of your flax, you continue over to the clothery, which is the 5x5 five five cloth stand. And here you're going to want to craft 21 linen threads and 18 linens which is enough to craft the full armor set. And the remaining linen and linen thread that you haven't used will be used for your short bow and later on for your full set of leather armor. And here you see the actual crafting process taking place. And uh, Grill is uh, playing in this particular uh, portion of the video. The video includes uh, Virtual, Grill, and myself. You can see here that he's crafting the boots and he replaces them in the paper doll, which is in your inventory. And then goes over to the wood shop, which you have to craft two poles to make the club, which you can see listed on the inventory options, and two pine strips. This all comes from the pine tree that we harvested out front. So he's crafting a couple pine strips. And then he heads over to the archery stand, which he can craft the short bow. So... Once he has crafted the short bow, the next thing you want to do is uh, equip the short bow. So you open up the uh, paper doll here and you bring it to your one, two, or three weapon slot. And whichever slot it is, that'll be your key binding. So he put it on one, so he presses one and 
there he has. He has a functioning short bow. Now, in this particular version of the playtest, there's no arrows that you have to equip, so you have unlimited arrows. And after you do that, you want to um, head out to the hunting grounds outside of the Citadel. And you're going to see a lot of different kinds of creatures. Initially, you're going to want to be fighting does and bucks. And also, if you come across a rabbit, you can uh, you know, kill some of them as well to help to make things such as a uh, trench. I found that they're a lot easier to kill with the club than they were the bow and arrow for the rabbits. Yeah, 100%. And, and this is where you're going to want to use some of your, your sprinting stamina. Because you know the rabbits are pretty fast, and some of the does and bucks will actually run away from you once they're hurt. So to catch up, sometimes you got to sprint up and and do it. So you want to kill a minimum of twenty six gear to craft the leather armor, and you want to potentially kill up to forty in total to get enough leather for the iron and steel weapons later. And also, deer don't just give armor, but they can also give you sinew and venison which you'll use for later bows and to make a trencher. And uh, the rabbits that you'll see as well at, that are scurrying about, they can be used to, uh, to make a trencher as well. Don't do what I did here, which was die. Yeah, I think I, <laughs> I did. Uh, I, I died three times in the playtest, so yeah, my aggro tendencies were not serving me well. Go ahead, Ellen. Uh, the next thing you want to do once you've hopefully not died and collected all your deer is you want to try to kill 18 wolves. And that is enough wolf, wolves to gather your toughened leather, which you'll then use to craft uh, one of the components of crafting of the brigadine armor, which is your tier 4 or the highest level armor. And you can see Grill here is aggroing the mobs onto these you know, unsuspecting people because the, the mobs tend to aggro who's ever closest. And you can see he switches aggro to uh, that person there. Did that a couple of times in the video. That earlier wolf from the, when I was clubbing the deer, that was actually Hammer Hammond that I, <laughs> I dragged that wolf off to. <laughs> nice. <laughs> we love you, Hammer. Yeah, really important again on the looting side, if two people damage an animal or a creature, then both can loot it and whoever loots it first gets it. So if you didn't damage the animal and they die, you can't loot it. So my point is, you know, you can kind of, uh, if you get the last shot, even though the other guy did more damage, if you beat him to it, if you loot it, it's yours. Hashtag melee life. Exactly. Now, that's a really important point that Grill just mentioned. So ideally, you've got the bow and, of course, the short range weapon like a club. So you start your attacks with the bow to soften up the enemy and then you switch to the club to do more damage when you get short range or close range. So really important. Also, you want to slow play this test. Uh, the, the creatures are tough. And I'll, I'll let Elam talk about what we're seeing here. It's really important. Yeah, so what we're doing here, we went into the wolf's den, which is directly in front of the citadel. And inside here is where you find iron. And you'll need at least 20 iron to craft your full set of tier 4 brigadine armor. However, depending on which weapons you want, if you want to craft your iron and steel weapons, you probably want to grab at least 50 to uh, you know, fully outfit yourself. This is coming now into the uh, goblin area, and Virtual is uh, playing at this particular time. Yeah, no, I got blessed. I thought it was good for a second, but the, the AI system servers crashed. So basically the goblins were not attacking us back. But you do have to kill at least 21 goblins to get the onyx to craft your brigadine armor. And what I was saying earlier is you really want to slow play this play test, meaning that take your time, gear up, go and kill the next level of creatures, go to the next level of gear, and keep progressing. We didn't have time to really max out the gear, but to, to be able to progress and do well here, you're going to have to, to do that. Uh, Elam, talk about the poplar tree. Yeah, so a poplar tree can be used to make like poplar shafts, which in the original playtest images was used to make the true arrows. Now, in the, our playtest on the 15th, we're not sure if they'll include unlimited arrows like this one or if we'll have to craft them. If we do have to craft them, that's where you find the poplar trees going up the pathway into the goblin area. 
Yeah, and then here I stumbled on another really important resource. It's coming up the hill. Yeah, there's another popular tree right there, actually, that we passed. The yeah. harvestable popular tree. We, we didn't actually find the harvestable ash tree. We found quite a few ash trees, just no actual uh, harvestable version of it. And this is the last thing that Virtual found right before the playtest ended. He found carbon, which just happens to be the last material you need to craft, uh, require to craft the brigadine armor. So you need 10 of those. And then you probably want about 30 or more, depending on which weapons you use. And I didn't give exact amounts because different people are going to want to use different weapons. But that's enough to craft pretty much whatever you want to craft. And what we're seeing here is just some kind of highlights of the test. Looking over here is just exploring the, you know, the non-function part of the Citadel of the Sun. I like how spacious all the buildings are compared to the deeds that uh like we built in Valheim. Everything's nice and spread out. I like the trees too. Yeah, yeah really pretty I, village, you know. Like like it feels like an actual like uh, it feels like a, a city. Big, big town, yeah, like a city town. It'd be fun um, to see like a few hundred or a few thousand people running around in here. Yeah, it is lacking the like majestic plots and stuff. So I think this is probably placeholder just for the test, but We'll, uh, you know, in time, of course, we'll find that out. And uh, you can see it's it's a nice, it's pretty. Pretty. And and Manny said that art-wise, it's only about 50% there. So we're going to continue to see massive improvements over time. But, I mean, take a look at this. To me, this is amazing. It looks great. I'll say I can see them adding additional textures to what we're seeing now. Yeah. The textures will be probably the, one of the last things they do, like really tweak that. Yeah. So this is the Citadel of the Sun, deed owner's home. And although you can't enter it here, whether or not you can enter it in the game is questionable. And uh, we finish off the actual video portion of the this video with some combat. And this is outside the wolf's den, which is directly in front of you. And the goblin area that you saw virtual killing the goblins is to the right there. Another thing I should mention, in we did find some U as well later on. And that was near where the... The, the deer were near the waterfall, so there is one single yew tree in that area as well. And uh, you can see the, the, the wolves, they, they take quite a beating. The other thing you see there is if people get between you and your target, they can actually block your arrows. Like that guy has a bunch of arrows in him, right? That elf. Yeah. And although you don't take damage from it, it does make it so you have less DPS on the actual mob. Those wolves are relentless. <laughs> They just keep coming. Yeah, they spawn quickly, they move quickly, they take a ton of damage, they do a lot of damage. <laughs> As you can see there, they definitely do a lot of damage. That guy's like twitching on the ground, right? <laughs> so, and uh, there's no reviving him at this point. He's, he's, he's gonzo. No, that guy's done. And there you go. Now we're going to move on to the next part of the video where we're going to look at crafting recipes. And as a side note, it is 4 a.m. Eastern time. And I, I, I don't live the type of lifestyle that Alem and Grill do, which is a whole other story. But that's how much mom loves you. I, I would never do this for anybody else but for you guys. So there you go. Now we're going to get into crafting recipes. Let's cue them up and uh, we'll, we'll have Alem walk us through them. Sure. All right. So starting with the archery stand. Yeah, so the archery stand, 5x5 five five, uh, archery building, and as you can see, there's three potential options in this particular playtest. You have the short bow, you have the long bow, and you have the champion bow. And each one, you know, is a little bit stronger than the next. Each one requires materials that are further down the line. So the initial one that we showed you crafting in the earlier video requires just the pine and the linen, so the flax and pine trees. The next, however, requires sinew, which comes from deer, and the yew strips, which comes from the lone tree that's 
in the uh, deer area out towards the the waterfall area. And the the sinew you craft at the meat stand as well, which we'll see a little bit later. The the last one, the ash, we never did find the ash tree. My guess is probably somewhere deep within the, the goblin territory, but that'll give you, you know, your ultimate bow. I like the yeah. interaction between the buildings. They have to use a bunch of them just to craft, you know, one weapon. Yeah, it's great. Now, one thing we don't know, and uh, Elam, I'll give you my guess, so I'm curious what yours is. What's the you know, hit damage jump from level to level. I, I would suspect it's probably about 50%, maybe up to even 100. How much do you think from the short bow to the long and the long to the champion does the damage go up? Yeah, so I, I think that's very reasonable. I would expect the percentage increases to probably be larger on the early stages. Like the short bow to long bow, I wouldn't be surprised to be 100%. Uh, it, it would be probably a little less likely from the longbow to champion bow to be, you know, a hundred percent as well, simply because uh, otherwise, compounding you know, this effect. number scales. Yeah. The compounding effect becomes really large, but it, it should be enough to be significant at the very least to feel that, you know, you're being rewarded for the time and effort that you took and, you know, the dangers you face to acquire all these not easy to acquire materials like you know That's these sure. are surrounded in goblins and wolves and everything wants to kill you right so it's not not as simple as it may sound i think if it kept doubling like that the power creep would get out of control really really quickly and of course at masters of materium we're going to be selling the finest bows and arrows in all of mirandus because we own the large archery so make sure you join us masters of materium.com <laughs> let's go to the next uh Next piece of crafting. Got a bread stand. Yeah. So this is like Mom Central, right? We're, we're going to have plenty of, plenty of bread stands, bakeries, etc. And the bread stand is essentially your 5x5 five five bakery. And this one here has fairly limited requirements and production capability. It does have flour. The flour you get from harvesting wheat, which we'll show a little bit later. And once you have the flour, you can combine that to make bread. And where it says auto consume, as soon as you make the bread, it immediately adds a small amount to your stamina bar. And by a small amount, I mean like maybe like 5% per piece of bread to your stamina bar. So you got, you got to produce a lot of this stuff unless you want to go into something stronger, like a trencher, per se. Do you think we can yeah, put we like a mom stamp on all the bread? <laughs> It'd be nice. Tag, tag stuff. Tin and like, wow. Right? Like a little brand or something. Like Let's burn it in there. Yeah, brand it. Absolutely. Uh, and again, really important, you cannot carry this bread with you. You can't carry any, any of the food. So that really changes the dynamics when you leave the citadels. You know, you basically have to go full power. And once your stamina is gone, you got to go back. There's no other alternative. Yeah, so in the actual game, the, the bread here would probably be the equivalent of a travel ration, and that should be carryable, or you should be able to carry that with you. But like uh, Virtual said, in this particular test, that's not, a, not an ability that you have. Also, when you run out of stamina, your health starts getting hit about every, I didn't time it exactly, but it seemed about every 30 seconds to 60 seconds, so... You know, running out of stamina will kill you as well. <laughs> so well, just be aware of that. Did you? Did you? We should have tested that to see if you ran out I, of stamina. I, I did. Be... I, I I depleted my stamina to zero, and then I was, I was getting hit. I, I didn't die because I went back and ate, but I would have died otherwise. I'm curious to see if that would actually kill you. If it would just take you to like one hit point, and then you would stay there. But something we didn't show and mention too. There is these tents where you can heal, in the citadels. So. FYI, that's the health element, but yeah, you can basically heal yourself, but you're still going to need food for the stamina. You have a cloth stand. Ooh. Fancy, fancy. Yeah. So cloth stand is my favorite building of all of them, of course. <laughs> this here, they call it a clothery in this test for whatever reason, but it is a 5x5 five five outfitter equivalent. And this is all the materials in here all come from flax in some way or another. So you take the flax, you make linen, and then you can use that, you know, make linen thread, and then you can take that to make all the different pieces of padded uh, armor. And the, the padded armor, 
does give a little bit more armor than the initial armor that you start with, but it's not a significant increase. You do notice much larger absolute value increases later on. And as Virtual mentioned before when he was talking about the additional you know, damage that a bow would get, that would be sort of consistent with the amount of additional armor that you're seeing with this armor set. So that, that would make sense for sure. Yeah, and you definitely, again, want to slow play and max out your gear before you try to go kill a mother. And here's all the individual materials. So for the actual pieces of linen, it's three flax. And for the linen thread itself, it's only the one flax. And you can see the uh, the gloves, the boots, and the armor. And Based on what we're seeing here, the more materials you use, the more armor that correlates to. Interestingly enough, on some of the later armor sets, and I'm not sure if it's an error, but once we get to them, you'll see that that correlation isn't the same. So in this case, it doesn't really matter which order you make things. Plus, you're going to have all the materials anyway. But later on, if you didn't happen to have all the materials for something, You'll find that getting focusing on crafting the thing that gives you the most defense per unit material would be uh, more efficient. Heat stand, mom, mom building version two. <laughs> so this is an, a, like an exact, pretty close to exact replica of the meat stand mm. that we've seen in earlier playtests with the uh, the fish, which is probably you know a hint <laughs> that fishing will be in the game at some point. Gotta you know, say these fish look it. funny. <laughs> yeah, they're they're a little kind of strange looking. Huh? So the crafting station, as you can see here, you have your venison, your sinew, and your rabbit meat. And the venison comes from deer parts. So when you kill a deer, you typically get a like a leather, a deer leather or deer skin, I should say, and you get some deer parts and. You're going to want to mix that between venison and sinew. Now, venison isn't something you, in quotes, need. It is something that will help you make trencher, which makes it so you don't have to make as much bread. However, the sinew is something that you need. So you should definitely prioritize using deer parts to make sinew because that's used in the later bow recipes. Yeah, it would also help and, you farm the deer more easily. Oh, most definitely, for sure. What's and the it? rabbit meat is for trenchers, which we'll get to a little later. And you kind of just kill them as you come across them. I was going to say what's interesting is that the deer parts are the heads, and the rabbit thing is just the body. It's like this headless rabbit corpse for some reason. Oh, and the, the thumbnails below. Yeah, I see yeah. that. That's awesome. <laughs> I just noticed that now. Virtual, are you going to say something? I used to hunt, hunt rabbit as a kid, so. Oh. I used to sneer them. Yeah, it's a big thing, big thing in our family with sneering rabbits. Mm -hmm. So the next thing is the metalworks, which is a five by five forge equivalent, also known as a simple forge. And this building crafts a ton of things. And the interesting thing is most of the stuff that you're going to craft at the forge is stuff that comes later in the game. Like most people wouldn't have really interacted much with the forge, if at all. So we'll, we'll see that when we see the uh, the materials here. Sure. Um, you see the defense numbers here. So I think we start off at defense six and now we're up to 14. So more than double from the initial to now. Yep. So definitely, definitely some levels. And uh, man, I would have loved to swing that Warhammer. It's calling my name. So we have charcoal, uh, which comes from a single pine. So this is something that pretty much anyone can craft right off the start. And you will require some charcoal later on. Next up is the actual iron, which is, of course, a mixture of charcoal plus the iron ore. The iron ore, of course, being in the wolf stand. And then the third step is the actual steel weapons. And I'm not sure if anyone actually got to making steel weapons. My guess is probably not. But that requires uh, carbon, which is deep within the goblin region, iron, which is in the wolfstone again, and the charcoal from the pine outside the citadel. The, the last thing I think is actually an error. It says you can craft carbon via two coals. However, carbon is something you actually harvest. 
because virtual, as you see at the end of the video, was actually harvesting carbon directly. So I, I do somewhat wonder if that that's a potential uh, error there. Yeah, and you're making charcoal with the pine, right? Not coal. Exactly. Well, my, my guess on that is you can do it both ways, but yeah, probably easier to just go uh, hit the rock that I saw. <laughs> so making charcoal didn't actually fill up where it says zero of two for the coal portion to make mm. the carbon. So, okay. and there's no yeah, recipes also, that like, use coal, yeah, right? Yeah, there's nothing that uses coal whatsoever. So that's what I'm saying. I, th I think that's actually an error. There's no way to confirm it, but uh, that's what I think it is. Like it's not needed, right? Because you can <laughs> harvest carbon directly. Yeah. So. Get the swords. Yeah. Oh, so. Sorry. We got we got lots of swords here. Obviously, you start off with the easy stuff, which just requires iron and some leather straps. And leather straps come from deer skin that you make into leather, and then you make into leather straps. So it's a little while before you can get any kind of melee weapon upgrades from your club whatsoever. And once you start getting that, you, you know, you go from the short sword to the long sword, and then on to the champion sword, which is essentially just more materials over the long sword. Personally, I don't see why anyone would really go to the long sword. Because just with a bit more materials, you can skip right to the champion sword. And the last one, the Voltaic sword, requires something special, which is the glowing essence. And it only requires one of those glowing essence, and it isn't something that anybody found in the playtest. So it's highly suspected that that drops from Mother herself. Do you think that whoever gets that might get an NFT of the Voltaic sword? I think that would be a very nice Easter egg if anyone's happening to listen to this, uh, you know, that would have the powers to make that happen. But uh, I, I'm not certain if that'll be the actual case. Oh, so then we got spears, which I actually, there was one person in the playtest that actually was rocking a spear, so. Yeah, so the spears you'd expect probably have longer range than the swords. Which, given, you know, how dangerous it is being in melee range, is probably beneficial. And the, the nonement materials you use for the spears is a little bit less, typically, than the, uh, the swords. So, they also, it also uses pulls. Yeah, they also that might do different types of damage, say, piercing versus slashing versus blunt damage for maybe the Warhammers down below them. Uh, maybe certain weapons are more effective on different mobs. Yeah. Yeah, I think it'll evolve to that. And we did ask, we had some devs with us during the play tests. And I think Ilum asked if the headshots would create more damage. And they said, not yet. So I think, you know, combat will get more and more sophisticated, obviously, as they develop the game. Yeah. So I think everything you said there, Grill, will be in the game as you said it. I don't think that's actually applied yet, though. And then, of course, the ultimate armor is the Brigadine armor. And in the previous video that we had that we created about crafting, this was called Elf Brigadine armor. And uh, something I mentioned in that one was maybe it was because they were using an elf, but it seems like that didn't apply here because playing as a human or an elf or whatever didn't change the name of it. It's just called Brigadine armor. And the one thing Brigadine armor... The two, actually, two things Brigadine Armor has that's different is they need Onyx, which of course comes from the goblins. And the other thing is the tough leather straps. And that's where you need to kill the wolf, because you take the wolf skins, you make tough leather, and then you combine the tough leather to make tough leather straps. Yeah, so that's going to be some, some tough, a lot of battles with some tough creatures to kill all those wolves and goblins to be able to get the Brigadine. So definitely uh, take your time and level up before you go there don't be like me and die to a buck <laughs> <laughs> yeah no, that, that, that didn't happen girl come on there's that was somebody else's gameplay right yeah, yeah that's how i thought uh yeah no that the brigadine stuff represents a pretty considerable amount of farming just 12 onyx alone for the chess pieces a lot yeah, yeah. definitely an accomplishment at this point like killing a single goblin, like one that wasn't bugged out at least, was significant. We actually had at nighttime, I headed outside the citadel, and a goblin made its way all the way to the citadel gates, and it went around and it did a lot of damage, to say the least. Yeah. And that was when everyone was just, you know, in the basic starter yeah. equipment. There was like 20 people attacking that goblin, and it was just kept on marching on. Are you, are you saying they had murked a bunch of mooks? 
Is what you're saying? <laughs> Possibly. The tannery. Ooh. The tannery. So the tannery, like the uh, the outfitter, hasn't been released yet. And this is a simple tannery. This also was the same kind of design that they had in the last playtest, where you could theoretically craft the, the wolf jerkin that didn't exist. But this one is typically for making various leather goods. As you can see here, you have the leather, tough leather, you have some various straps, and then most importantly for most people will be the Tier 3 armor, which is the leather armor. And the leather armor is a 50% increase in defense over the Tier 2, and the Tier 4 armor is about a 50% increase in defense over this Tier 3 armor. And here you can see the leather comes from deer skin, tough leather from the wolves, which uh, kind of are ubiquitous throughout the area however a little more prevalent within the wolves den and then each of the straps requires three of the additional leathers to combine and as you can see from the leather armor i think all of us got a full set of leather armor nope. if i'm not mistaken no <laughs> no no i had boots and gloves i never had the chest piece the tavern Ooh, the tavern so this is the grand tavern and this is an image that we've seen on the Miranda's website and also in Discord previously. And we can go up to the actual uh, tavern itself here. And if you interact with the tavern barkeep, you can make a trencher. And the trencher in the last playtest was made with inside the outpost home or deed owner's house. However, in this one, you can make it directly in the tavern. And the materials are a little bit different. You see six flour, which is, you know, a combination of wheat. Plus you have the venison, which comes from the, uh, the deer and obviously some rabbit meat. And did any of you guys get to actually test out a trencher to see how much stamina it regens? No, I it's so easy, so easy to farm the wheat and just eat bread like... It seemed yeah. like a waste to use any of the deer parts on venison. Yeah, I did. I did both, and honestly, I felt like just you go and just spam a bunch of wheat and just spam a bunch of flour and just spam, spam a bunch of uh, bread it was like it's just as fast. Yeah. yeah, but you know this this I think levels you up, but maybe in two if you're like almost dead, maybe two or almost uh, completely depleted. So if like and thirty loaves of bread. But the, the bread, I think it took maybe around 15 to completely like level up. I, I didn't count, but it was around there. But it was cool. Medieval uh, shepherd's pie here. Now here is the wood shop. Also, the it's actually a 5x5 five five woodworking stand. And that's where you craft your first weapon, the club, which is fairly weak, but still does twice the damage of a short bow. And you get some poles, and most importantly, you get the thick pole. Everyone likes and, the thick uh, pole. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You want a thick pole? Did do you guys get a thick pole, or do you guys did you no. have a thick pole? I'm not so lucky no, in life. I don't no, have the I thick pole. A thick pole. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure a lot of people would like to have a thick pole. More importantly, perhaps though, you also craft the various materials to make bows. So here you see the pine strip, the yew strip, the popular, and the ash. Just remember, it's not how thick your pole is; it's how you use it. And uh, you can see here the pole, you need to make it from pine, and then you take those poles and combine them to make a club, which kind of seems a little odd to me given the image with the, you know, the spikes and stuff sticking out of it. And then you make the ash strips from the, uh, the ash, which, like I said, we didn't find. I'm not sure if it was actually in this test or not. And that, of course, makes the thick pole. And you combine that to make the champion bow, of course. The the U strip again we did find, but we didn't get the chance to actually make the long bow. And that makes U strips. The popular is used for, like I said, the true arrows from what was listed in the previous play test. But the popular on this test, there's nothing you actually use popular strips for. So that might be a little surprise that we're seeing in the upcoming May 15th play test. Yeah, there's a chance that we have to actually craft some arrows for that. Yeah, the paper doll. So you see the uh, the starting uh, gear that he has in the backpack. And it's interesting to note that you st everyone started with 100 hit points. And from what we've heard directly from Michael McCarthy is that the paired vox and or creature vox 
will give you a 25% bonus. And that's an absolute 25% bonus, meaning that your hit points would be 125. So based on what we've seen, that's actually pretty significant. You know, that's an extra hit or two on a, you know, a higher tier mob attacking. The, potentially the difference from, you know, surviving versus having to uh, restart. Is it considering, it's huge. Yeah, considering it's how huge. precious your health is in version of the game, 25 extra health is just massive. Now, again, obviously they're giving us a simplified version of things. Alum, do you think once the game launches, weight management is also going to be a part of it, meaning that, you know, we'll only be able to carry X amount of weight and every little item, for example, every arrow would have a, a 0.1 pound weight. And if you're carrying 100, it's, you know, 10 pounds of arrows. Do you think that's going to be part of the final game? I do suspect that, and based on that, you're probably not going to see what we're seeing here, where someone's carrying around, you know, random starter gear that they don't need. You'd probably be, you know, scrapping that or selling that or dumping it or whatever. You're, you're going to want to, you know, limit your weight. The, another important consideration when it comes to things like encumbrance is whether or not that makes it so you, you know, affects your mobility. And that's really important in these kind of games as well. So it'll be interesting to see for sure. Also on this paper doll, you can see all some of the other slots as well. You have the three weapon slots. You see the instrument, the quiver, which we didn't need, the arrows, which may or may not be used based on what we're seeing with the popular. You're seeing the shield, the necklace with potential charm. The vox may actually equip to that. Ring, which I'm assuming will be where you equipped your Ring of Discord, and the helmet, which isn't something that we could craft in this particular test. So there's a bunch of different things you can harvest. Here's a image of what it looks to harvest uh, flax, which uh, I find the, the harvestables, at least the food-based harvest will be really quite pretty. The, their imaging, the way they move and stuff, it feels very, very good to me. Yeah, no, I, I was going to say the same thing. They look great. Yeah, all the plants and the flowers, and uh, you could tell they've spent a little more time there. I think when well, once you start getting the creatures, I think the goblins look awesome, but things like the wolves, you can tell there's a little more work to do. So, yeah, but the plants look amazing. And right next to the flax is the wheat, and it, you know, it looks like wheat. So, again, very, very pretty looking, infinitely harvestable, like all the resources in this test. Yeah, it's important to note that in the actual game, you won't be able to go up to something and click it, you know, a thousand times and get a thousand of that material. There will be uh, limits to it, and it likely won't be as easy as just harvesting. You'll probably have to, you know, take multiple steps to actually grow it and water it and seed it. I should have loaded up a shot of the wheat from the earlier play tests. What a difference. <laughs> Oh yeah, it just right. looked like like, like yellow a pole. sticks. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And it turned like golden when they were full size. Yeah, this this looks much more natural. And there you have the pine tree. So this particular pine tree is exactly when we showed you in the video going up to the citadel on the right hand side. So before you enter the citadel, you should stop by this pine tree and you know load up on as much pine as you want. At, at the very least, you want to carry enough to make your you know, initial like bow and such. But if you want to stack amount, the amounts that I mentioned in the earlier video, then that'll give you enough so you never have to, you know, harvest pine again. Uh, at least until you die and <laughs> have to redo yeah. the whole thing. As I know quite well from dying twice. Uh, after a while, there's a crowd around that, that pine tree. She's very popular. Oh, really? Nice. Oh, yeah. yeah, Grill and I were uh, harvesting the same tree after we both died mm -hmm. once. So. We're tapping that pine tree together. But it'd be interesting to see in the real game if it's unlimited. Like, obviously, here in the playtest, you can just go get as much as you want. But, you know, are they going to tune the resources, even from stuff that's just in nature? No, I'm not talking about stuff in farms, but things like trees. I'm assuming it's going to be capped as well, Elam thoughts. Yeah, I, I think you're going to find kind of caps and limitations on pretty much everything <laughs> it would be kind of like economy breaking if you know they, you could just get mm -hmm. infinite amounts of things so this here we're seeing is a poplar tree and we've seen a couple different harvestable poplar trees 
In the actual Citadel, interestingly enough, you see almost all of these trees, but they're all non-harvestable versions. And it's important to note that the harvestable versions of trees are much smaller than the non-harvestable versions. And like I said, this popular tree you can use to make popular shafts, but in this exact playtest, either they didn't implement it or they kind of left it in by accident. You can't actually use anything, any end product with poplar. But we did make a note of it because, uh, you know, we came across it deep within this uh, goblin stronghold. And the elusive yew tree. So this thing is really, really hard to find. It's actually not hard to find when you know where it is, but initially, you know, it was quite difficult. So typically what you have to do is you have to go towards the waterfall area, which is when you exit the citadel, you go to the left, kind of up through a mountain pass. And then you follow along the left wall or the left mountain wall all the way around. And this one little yew tree, harvestable yew tree, is kind of just out in the open. And it's surrounded by uh, wolves as well. And this here, like we mentioned, was in the wolf stand. And there's actually two different types of iron ore. They, they produce both iron ore, but they look different. So one is on the ground, which is on the left-hand side. And the other one on the right-hand side is in veins, and the veins are actually within the walls, like the, the vertical walls of the cave and, and or cavern. So either one you can mine, and they both produce the same uh, resource in infinite supply. Yeah, I thought it was kind of interesting that they had a secondary node type in the walls. Go ahead. Yeah, I think you're giving us a little preview of kind of what mining could look like right i think that's kind of what they went for there it'd be really fun if those right. veins aren't like deep into the wall you have to like dig them out kind of, like valheim. Yeah. kind of like valheim style we would be chasing those veins for like it seemed like half a screen and this is the last harvestable that we found and that was the carbon which is at the very deepest portion of that goblin area and like i said this is used to craft the uh, the highest tier weapons yeah, doe a deer, you know, a female deer. That's uh, pretty straightforward what we're seeing here. This just goes for the entire bestiary of what we've seen up to this point in Mirandus. And this is definitely the creature you want to start with. Uh, does and rabbits are pretty easy to kill with a club. Yeah. Those like the press. It's just staring at the rock there. <laughs> <laughs> Contemplating the fact it's going to die. <laughs> it's about to get clubbed from behind. <laughs> <laughs> it knows, it knows. Uh, the and, bucks are no uh, joke. Like when you're when you're just getting started, the bucks will fuck you up. So yeah. be aware of that. <laughs> I got double buck, so I know. Uh, yep, that's for sure. There, uh, it's surprising actually, because they, you know, in most games, these kind of animals just run away from you, and that's pretty much it. But in this one, they they kind of start by avoiding you, and then they run away, and and after a little while, they they're like, okay, enough of this, and then they just go like full on Terminator mode on you. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sometimes they bug and they just keep running. And then, because I was playing the one, I was like, oh, I'll just keep smacking them. And then both of them turn to once. And I was like, oh, I'm in trouble. Well, I think once they're close to death, they run away. That's that's my take on how they're programmed. But yeah, I was surprised as well. I think it was Vera Awesome that said, yeah, she was getting killed by bucks and toes. I'm like, okay, didn't expect that. But yeah, it's, it's definitely interesting. When I'm close to death, I also run away. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a good move. Fight, flight, or freeze. You weren't very successful, though. <laughs> no, that's for sure. And and just a note on that, like that's one of the reasons why I think the main reason to really manage your stamina and your sprints is so that you can run away if you're screwed. You know, that's really one of the main reasons. But you know, some animals will outrun you if you've got your weapon pulled out, and that's another little pro tip here. Uh, if you have to run away, basically put put your weapon away and then sprint because the weapons do slow you down. So I like this shot, especially the guy on the left. He's doing like, you know, some right. trick moves. He's jumping up and he's like firing in the air, probably getting a better line of sight over that, uh, you know, elf in front of him. And you can see the wolf to the left. He's got like, what, 10 or 20 arrows in his head, right? So, you know, these things, you can, you can keep shooting at them. It take a lot of damage, to say the least. That's awesome. Great job. Yeah, I mean, you can't just play. You got you to gotta have style points too, man. Unlike that guy, that elf, that elf is about to get wrecked. This guy's jumping away and shooting arrows. And there's the goblin. The goblin, like we said, takes about 25 of the basic arrows. So these guys are really, really tanky. They don't hit quite as hard as the wolves, but they're fast. They're a little harder to uh, predict. They move around kind of, you know, 
a little more erratically and they take a lot of damage. There's also quite a lot of them and they kind of spread out in a way that it's easier for them to kind of like flank you when you least expect it because they come from quite some distance. So you got you to gotta watch out for these guys. Speed wise, Three. which animal you think was the fastest? Was it the wolf in your opinion? Like when they're running? Uh, potentially the wolf. The, the goblin can really move too though. Like, the goblins, when you're fighting, they're obviously, they're immobile because the, you know, the AI glitch. But the one that I saw attack the Citadel, he kind of came, like, out of nowhere. And, yeah, he, like, took me down to half health before I even knew that a goblin was, like, attacking me. And that was from front on. I, I also wonder if it was at nighttime. I do wonder if they actually get, you know, potentially buffed up at all at night. Whether they, mm. you know, move faster or become more aggressive or whatever. Yeah, it's, besides, it certainly felt that way. Besides just the additional spawns. I think we have one more left. And we have the Goblin Brute. So this is a tougher version of your typical Goblin. And uh, we didn't specifically be able to take down the Goblin Brute. And I don't know anyone who was capable of doing so. But it's, uh, you know, my guess, you know, you probably get some additional onyx from them the other possibility if mother is not the person to drop the glowing essence this person could potentially drop the glowing mm. essence so that you can use the voltaic sort on mother that's true but, uh, I, think I, I think you'd be more satisfying to get the drop from mother personally yeah he looks like a failed hulk <laughs> <laughs> yeah and uh, we don't have any images of mother however images do exist of some pre-concept versions of her but we don't have any actual in-game images of mother however mother was found within the test and in the uh, actual game obviously that's who we're going to be uh, aiming for for sure and it was incredible play tests incredible experience i think again it's going to really help hopefully a lot of new players get into it or people realize how great this game is going to be but what to me is even more exciting is thinking about the real game, like the resource management. Again, like it, it, they're making as hard as this is, the real game is going to be a lot harder in different ways. Like you're going to have to buy things, find things, things are going to be limited, things are going to be harder to craft because you're going to have to either buy them or find them and, you know, make a deal with a stand or whatever. So it's, it's going to be a very different experience when the real game launches, but I think this gives you a really good taste of kind of the full, not the full thing, but a good menu. So what was your last uh, final thoughts here, Grill, on the playtest? Uh, excited to for the 15th so we could play uh, for more than 90 minutes. Yeah. I, I'd like to, you know, pull the gear up and see the whole, you know, run around the world and check it all out. Yeah, I felt like we saw maybe like a third of it, you know, so yeah. a lot more to see. What about you, LM, final thoughts? I'm definitely looking forward to it. Uh, I mentioned before that I had a bug, and uh, I should mention what that was. So. In the, this playtest, you didn't actually log in with actual accounts. And what was happening is me and some other random person were apparently logging into the same account. So every time I would log in, I would freeze them on their screen. And every time they logged in, they would freeze me on my screen. So having that happen, you know, every so many minutes, will uh, it'll be a breath of fresh air to actually be, be able to play, you know, a nice smooth experience and... It's something that I'll likely be, you know, grinding pretty much every waking hour for the next couple of weeks. So, let's uh, let's do it, guys. Yeah, let's let's yeah. Let's, let's own this test. And and one last thing, all three of us have decided that if we get the final hit on Mother, we will be sharing the loot with all of the active registered members of the Mom that are part of the team. So, if you have not joined the Masters of Materium dot com yet, make sure you hit the website hit the discord become an official member it's really easy you get the instructions when you come in the discord and make sure you join us in the play test we want you with us and we want to share the loot with you so come join us and let's go kill mother masters of thanks boys yep. it was awesome and excited to play some more with you guys next week you get some sleep now yeah <laughs> i'm going right straight to bed man sleep to the 15th <laughs> <laughs>